In a military camp 100 kilometers away from Silio Mount Aisha city, an injured soldier who escaped from the city is being brought into the camp. The soldier reports that Spartacus rebel army has occupied our city, proclaiming himself as the bringer of death. Before the soldier could finish speaking, Caesar swiftly strikes his head with a sword. The one thing Caesar despises the most is cowardly deserters. Witnessing Caesar's furious action, Tiberius strongly expresses his disapproval, reaffirming his position as the leader here. Such an extreme abuse of power seriously insults Tiberius's authority. He immediately demands that Caesar leave the camp and go back. Little does he know, this is exactly the result Caesar desired. Under the ignorant leadership of Tiberius, little can be accomplished. A brilliant plan has already taken shape in Caesar's mind. Tiberius, consumed by anger, commands the troops to march towards Silio Mount Aisha city. Under the cover of night, Tiberius and his army stand guard at the top of the mountain outside the city, observing the situation inside the city. They happen to witness Spartacus leaving the city to trade with pirates. If the two factions successfully reach a cooperative agreement, it will be more difficult to besiege the rebel army. Tiberius immediately issues orders, eager to annihilate them all. If he achieves military merit, he can prove his leadership skills to his father. He has long forgotten his father's admonitions before departing, for Crassus repeatedly warned him not to act alone before the main army arrived. Directly confronting Spartacus is a grave taboo. At the beach, the pirate leader has been waiting on the shore for some time, while Spartacus brings supplies to purchase food. However, Spartacus notices that the pirates have brought only a few items. He inquires about their needs and expresses regret over doing business with dishonest people. Just as tensions rise between the two parties, a spear flies through the air, killing one of Spartacus' comrades. Clearly, this unexpected event has no direct connection to the pirates. All of a sudden, Roman soldiers pounce like starving wolves. The rebellion army and the pirates merge into one in an instant. They confront the Roman soldiers with majestic force. Amidst the fierce battle, Spartacus notices a large number of Roman soldiers slowly approaching from afar. If they continue to fight like this, they will be in danger. In this extremely perilous moment, the pirate leader lights a torch and tosses it into the air. Upon receiving the signal, pirates at sea immediately ignite flaming projectiles, hurling them toward the Roman legion. Explosions of fireballs occur among the Roman soldiers. In an instant, the entire Roman army screams in agony and flees in disarray. Even though Tiberius shouts loudly to hold their ground, not a single person obeys. Suddenly, a rebel soldier thrusts a spear into Tiberius's body. His subordinates come to assist him and demand a retreat. In order to save his life, he reluctantly withdraws from the battlefield, feeling bitter about it. After this battle, the misunderstanding between the pirates and Spartacus is successfully resolved. They decided to continue working together. Unfortunately, when Spartacus and his group return to the city after the battle, all they see is the lifeless body of the blacksmith. Gannicus Sir witnessed the tragic death of his brother, leaving him speechless for a long time. Naivia said that the blacksmith wanted to kill her to silence her, but Gannicus Sir would not believe that the blacksmith had rebelled. This event laid the foundation for the eventual separation of Crixus and Gannicus. During the unloading of supplies by the rebels, a can of wheat was accidentally shattered and spilled onto the ground. Before he could regain his senses, a group of starving refugees began to frenziedly snatch the spilled wheat. Upon seeing this, a man immediately turned around and started physically attacking the refugees, while Spartacus stepped in to intervene. He gave orders to his men. Let them each get a handful of grain and leave the dock. The refugees could no longer be bullied, this was the harsh reality of the once prosperous city. From the moment Spartacus took control of the city, the Roman army immediately cut off all land transportation routes. The only way out was to rely on pirates and purchase food at high prices through the sea. At this moment, the pirates raised the prices even higher, claiming that Roman merchants had stockpiled all the food. It became increasingly difficult to seize food, and they were forced to raise the price. Spartacus dared not provoke the pirates at this time. If he were to retaliate against them and cut off the only means of buying food, then everyone in the city would starve to death. He had no choice but to accept it. Crixus and Naivia once again urged Spartacus to execute the remaining Roman prisoners of war as soon as possible. They believed that wasting food on them was unacceptable, but Spartacus firmly refused. What meaning is there in liberating slaves if we indiscriminately kill the innocent, he asked. Bigger problems followed as a large number of escaped slaves flocked outside the city walls. As a fellow slave, Spartacus had no choice but to accept them unconditionally. One slave brought news of the massive Crassus army camp less than half a day's journey away. 
Their camp was even larger than our city, but they showed no signs of attacking. Spartacus and the others were deeply puzzled by this. At that moment, a group of Roman soldiers suddenly appeared among the slaves. They attempted to infiltrate the city to gather intelligence, but Spartacus immediately ordered the city gates to be closed. Within minutes, the incoming soldiers were swiftly dealt with. During the commotion, a blonde man aggressively attacked one of the soldiers, and Spartacus expressed his gratitude towards him. To his surprise, the man turned out to be Caesar. Spartacus asked him to display his personal slave brand to prove his identity as a slave. Caesar then showed them the wounds on his body and told them that he had cut off the brand with a knife. This incident made people realize that Roman spies had infiltrated the city. Spartacus immediately understood Crassus's capabilities and his intention to remain stationary. Crassus employed different strategies than other Roman commanders. He used our own tactics against us, he was too cunning. With so many unidentified individuals in the city, it was temporarily impossible to distinguish the spies. Spartacus mentioned the worst-case scenario, if he were to be assassinated. Crixus would lead everyone since they now had food and the protection of the city walls. Gannicus and Crixus happened to be training the newcomers together which would help uncover any suspicious spies. They then set out with Agrin to find Leda and extract more information about Crassus from her. They never suspected that Leda had hidden over a dozen Roman nobles in the stable's secret warehouse. Leda informed Spartacus that Crassus was a meticulous and talented individual who would stop at nothing to achieve his goals. The reason why he became the richest man is all because of his amazing methods, which gave his competitors no chance of winning. It was only now that Spartacus realized the two Roman generals they had killed earlier had fallen into Crassus's trap. Following Spartacus's orders, Gannicus and Crixus conducted a selection and training process for the newcomers. Gannicus was impressed by Caesar, who had just arrived in the city, and he asked Caesar to showcase his skills. During their sparring, Gannicus was astonished to see that Caesar's swordsmanship skills were far beyond those of an ordinary slave. Caesar falsely claimed to be a shepherd, stating that these were basic survival skills. This was their first battle against each other. Although Caesar was a formidable warrior on the battlefield, he was slightly inferior in strength compared to the champion who had fought in the arena for a long time. However, the defeated Caesar clearly displayed extreme dissatisfaction. This scene happened to be keenly noticed by Crixus, and then he ordered his men to further investigate Caesar's identity. And he had long been very dissatisfied with Spartacus for not killing Roman prisoners. He tested Caesar by defying Spartacus's orders and imprisoning a Roman noblewoman. The woman had suffered inhumane torture, and at this point, she was barely alive. Tom repeatedly demanded Caesar to torment and mistreat the woman once again as proof of his loyalty to them. Witnessing the pitiful state of the woman, the compassionate Caesar couldn't bear it. He immediately revealed his true identity. Crassus's massive army, consisting of 10,000 soldiers, will soon launch another attack on the city. You just need to endure a few more days, but the woman has no desire to survive. Her only wish is for Caesar to end her life quickly, to avoid enduring such hardships. She longs for a moment of release, and Caesar, with tears in his eyes, kisses her forehead before taking her life. Caesar successfully gains trust, and carries the noblewoman's body to the square. He falsely claims that the woman attacked him from behind but was fortunately saved by Caesar. In this way, Caesar's identity is acknowledged. At the same time, it also aroused the anger of these people who wanted to kill the Roman prisoners, including Crixus and Naivia of course. On the other side, while Leda sneaks off to the cellar to see the imprisoned Roman nobles, she is inadvertently discovered by a female slave. After some questioning, the slave learns that Leda is harboring those Roman nobles. The slave has always admired Gannicus and immediately informs him of the situation. Gannicus hurries to the stable, where he not only discovers Leda's hidden Roman captives, but also learns that his good friend, the blacksmith, was killed by Naivia. Gannicus becomes extremely angry and immediately orders them to tie up the captives and bring them to see Spartacus. He goes alone to confront Naivia and clear his brother name. But Naivia not only shows no remorse but repeatedly expresses that all Roman captives should be executed. To protect Naivia, Crixus directly engages in a fight with Gannicusser. The evenly matched combat between the two lasts for a long time. Meanwhile, Caesar continuously seeks opportunities to make the situation worse. At a critical moment, he throws a dagger, instantly killing the Romans who were preparing to attack. Gannicusser then firmly pins Crixus to the ground in this highly tense moment. Naivia picks up a stone and hurls it at Gannicus, knocking him unconscious. 
Caesar takes the opportunity to step forward and deliver a speech, declaring war on the Romans. Under Naivia's further instigation, the thoughtless Crixus immediately proclaims that the Romans will pay the price in blood. Thus, the brutal massacre of captives officially commences. Wherever they go, as long as there are Romans, they mercilessly slaughter them. The entire city plunges into a bloodbath, a sight too horrifying to bear. Meanwhile, Spartacus has already reached a happy cooperation agreement with the pirate leader. At this moment, a man rushes in, informing them of an emergency outside. Spartacus hastily rushes back to the city. Meanwhile, Sasha follows Gannicusser's orders and discreetly avoids the rioters, intending to bring Leda and a dozen other Romans to be dealt with by Spartacus. Unfortunately, in the narrow corridor, they coincidentally encounter the rebels who are searching for Romans. Crixus also arrives at this moment, ready to execute Leda immediately. At a crucial moment, Spartacus intervenes just in time to prevent it. Crixus demands that Spartacus kill Leda. Spartacus finds himself in a dilemma, unsure of how to decide. Then asks Leda why she concealed this matter. Leda's response moves Spartacus. Spartacus contemplates for a moment. If he were to kill Leda now, he would be no different from their enemies. He promptly rejects Crixus's suggestion and orders the remaining captives to be taken to his courtyard. If anyone else indiscriminately slaughters the innocent, regardless of the outcome, they will meet a dead end.